In September, we did a report on the number of illegal hysterectomies in ICE detention centers. Uh, and since that time, there's been new developments that are not very positive. And so recently, I spoke to Asade Shahshahani from Project South. Okay, since you last came on this program and reported uh, what was happening in relationship to the uh, ICE detention centers with the women, uh, I understand some really bad things that happened since then. What's the status now of the women that had received uh, hysterectomies and what's going on in the case right now? Right, so um, the Los Angeles Times has documented cases of 19 women and our team of lawyers and advocates collectively has um, documented cases of at least 57 women who were subjected to invasive gynecological procedures without their consent. Um, now, instead of cooperating in the investigation, ICE is um, actually trying to cover its own tracks by um, deporting uh, witnesses and survivors of medical abuse. Um, so we are um, seeking congressional help and um, also um, seeking, you know, our team of advocates also seeking the uh, help of courts to try to put a stop to the deportations. Um, we have also filed a lawsuit against ICE because we um, filed the Freedom of Information Act request to try to find out um, information about um, gynecological procedures at various detention centers uh, around the country, not just urban, um, wanting to find out what type of, um, you know, what type of procedures are being done, um, you know, given what we have found at Irving, um, we have cause for grave concern about um, the type of activities that ICE and the contractors are engaging in. And um, after we filed, uh, after we filed the FOIA, we didn't hear back from ICE at all. So we decided to go ahead and uh, we partnered up with um, Crew and the National Immigration Project of the National Lawyers Guild to file a lawsuit against ICE. Um, and so we do hope that we'll get our hands on the documents. Okay, so what I understand so far, uh, six uh, women has been deported and uh, several more are in line to be deported. Is there any kind of injunction or, or something y'all can do to stop the next round of deportations? Right, and some of the deportations were stopped um, thanks to you know, support from uh, members of Congress. Um, Congressman Hank Johnson, for example, who's from Georgia, has been um, you know, very outspoken and um, helpful on this issue. Um, the broader <clears throat> members of our coalition are also going to court um, and trying to um, you know, put a stop to the deportations as well. And I understand in the same report, there's also uh, a mistreatment or misabuse uh, of COVID-19 cases and stuff. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, right. In the complaint that we filed um, with the Department of Homeland Security Office of Inspector General on September 14th, we also talked about the lack of care for uh, people uh, detained at Irwin when it comes to COVID-19. Um, so just one example, um, people at Irvine uh, were not being tested for COVID even when they asked repeatedly. And it was not until um, my organization, Project South, filed a complaint, a separate complaint, um, a couple of months ago um, that, you know, they started testing people. Um, also, if, you know, employees uh, exhibited signs of COVID, management is still asked them to report to work. So um, typically they exhibited a lack of concern for both the detained people and the employees um, when it comes to protecting people against the spread of the pandemic. Okay, so now the uh, whistleblower, uh, the nurse, uh, Don Wooten, 
Uh, is there any repercussions? What's her status now? So, you know, when she started the speaking out um, about what she was seeing in terms of lack of protection for COVID, they demoted her. Um, and so, you know, from a full-time nurse, she became, um, her hours were reduced and she was demoted to um, uh, as needed nurse. Um, and so that is her status right now. Um, she has not been asked to come back to the facility. Um, you know, she has not been terminated either, probably because they figured that that would be very bad for them, that type of overt retaliation. But, you know, um, in some ways they have already retaliated against her by reducing her hours. Um, and so um, she definitely is a very courageous human being for coming forward um, and um, revealing abuses and going against um, basically the U.S. government and a private prison corporation. Okay. All right, so LaSalle Corrections and the rest of those private prison operations have been notorious for their treatment of uh, uh, detainees, uh, prisoners, inmates, etc. cetera. Uh, beyond filing for your uh, requests and that kind of stuff, is there anything the public can do to assist in putting a spotlight on this? Um, contacting members of Congress is really important. Um, you know, Congress does have the power to defund ICE. Um, you know, it, it's our taxpayer money funding these detention centers and uh, providing, you know, enriching the private prison corporations. Um, so we should take back control over how our money, public money is being spent. Um, so please continue to put pressure on your member of Congress asking them to investigate, um, you know, what we need is a hearing, um, is a hearing and also, um, you know, we need to push forward with um, shutting down of the Irving County Detention Center. Um, there is no reason that um, this prison um, where there have been systematic abuses happening is still operating. Um, and uh, Congress has a fundamental role to play. Um, so we do hope that early in the new year, um, there will be a hearing and that they will push forward with shutting this place down. Okay, uh, well, uh, please get in touch with us again if any new developments come up or, or prior to uh, the congressional hearing, if that's scheduled, uh, so we can look at this and we can follow it and, and share it with the public. Thanks for joining me. Thank you very much for having me. Okay. And thank you for joining this episode of Rattling the Bars.